Hello everyone, I'm Megan Lee. If you're new to my channel, welcome to Beauty and the Beasts, where I mix scary storytelling with skincare or makeup or really whatever I'm feeling like. For those who prefer true crime over spooky tales, don't forget to check out my true crime content too. If you are ready for a chilling yet relaxing night, then you're in the right place for a spooky nighttime self-care session. Tonight's story takes us to Japan. It's a tale I've translated from an online community shared by someone who claims to have experienced it firsthand. But as with many Yuri stories, the truth is always a bit murky. It's up to you to decide what to believe. So let's dive in. But be warned, this one's going to be quite the journey. So there was this high school boy, let's name him A. This high school kid was really into short distance running. He was incredibly dedicated to sport, often practicing late into the night. Rather than staying at school to train, he preferred the roads near his home. His favorite spot for running was a nearby bridge, about 100 meters long which was perfect for his sprint training. But there was a somber side to this bridge. It was known as a place where people often went to end their lives. Standing about 30 meters high and usually dimly lit, it seemed to be a chosen spot for those contemplating jumping off the bridge. A often saw flowers laid out at the bridge's center, likely in memory of those who had jumped. But he didn't care. Despite this, he focused on his running, using the bridge as his practice ground. He went to the bridge and practiced there every day without dwelling too much on its darker history. So A had this idea, sort of patrolling the bridge at night, hoping to prevent any tragic incidents. And one night, something really strange happened. He saw this girl in a white dress running across the bridge. At first, A thought she might be some kind of a ghost, but then he realized she was real. He kept his distance and watched. That's when he noticed there were more people around where the girl stopped. It looked like a film crew. One person was carrying something square. Another had this spear-like stick and there was someone with lights. They were acting kind of strange, talking in a way that made A think they were trying not to disturb something. Then one of them walked to the middle of the bridge, picked something up and just threw it into the river. The whole atmosphere turned tense and quiet and A, he was feeling a bit intimidated by this older group. So he decided to wait until they were gone before he went to check out the center of the bridge. When he finally did, he noticed that the flowers he had seen the day before, the vase and everything were gone. So he was really confused. He was puzzled by this and thought, what did those people do? So the next day, he decides to bring some wildflowers to the bridge himself, kind of like replacing the ones that were tossed away. But as he got there, he just stopped in his tracks, completely frozen. I'll be right back. Fresh. That spot on the bridge where flowers were usually laid, it was completely covered with tons of flower bouquets that day. Imagine a pile almost as big as uh, a large trash bag. These flowers, dark brown and wrapped in white paper, looked eerily new and a bit creepy. So A thought maybe someone who was upset about the flowers thrown into the river the night before had placed them there. But how the flowers were placed was kind of creepy. So he left his wildflowers and just ran off the bridge. But as he ran away, he glanced back at the bridge from a distance. And that's when he noticed something bizarre. There was this white stick-like thing poking out from the gaps in the bridge's railing, reaching towards the path. It looked like a human arm, as if someone was hanging off the side of the bridge, trying to climb back up. 
So he thought, is that, is that someone who tried to jump but failed? But deep down, he felt it wasn't a person. Staring intently, he heard a slow female voice. At the same time, wet hair that looked like seaweed flopped out onto the path. This pale, human-like head with long hair emerged. This thing grabbed the wildflowers A had left and just smeared them into its mouth. Just as quickly, the hand, hair, and head retracted behind the bridge, disappearing as if being sucked away. But the gap in the railing was too narrow for a human head. That white head must have deformed to slip through it. So A thought to himself, like, what the hell? Like, what was that? He ran home faster than he ever had, probably breaking his record in the process. The next morning, A's mom had something unexpected to say. She told him, don't go to that bridge anymore. And A was surprised, like, how did she know? So he got curious and he asked why. She told him Mr. Suga, who lives near that bridge, said he saw something burning there yesterday. It could be an arsonist or some weirdo, so it's best you don't go there alone anymore. So A started thinking, what was burning there? Maybe the flowers? But here's when it gets weirder. According to the stories his mom gathered from the locals, the fire on the bridge was seen for several hours yesterday. A doubted if withered flowers could burn that long, so after school that day, he decided to investigate and, yeah, go back to that bridge. But, of course, he was scared. Feeling uneasy about going alone, he took a friend from his sports club with him. They rode their school bikes to the bridge. When they got there, it was around the same time as the previous day, and the surroundings were slowly darkening. So he cautioned his friend, hey, let's not get too close. He told him, uh, who was pedaling, to stop about 20 meters away from the bridge's center. He thought it was too dangerous to just rush in. His friend, who was always a bit jumpy, replied, all right, I didn't even want to come to this kind of spot anyway. In the growing darkness, they both stared intently at the spot where the weird incident had happened. And suddenly, the wind picked up. His friend saw something, so he said, what's lying there in the middle? It gives me a bad feeling there's something white. The white thing turned out to be a sheet of A4 sized paper. It looked like several sheets were laid out one after another along the walkway. And the papers, the paper stayed put despite the wind making them flutter as if it was stuck on the ground. These two boys, drawn by curiosity, they moved closer to the white papers. These papers seemed like the remnants of the wrapping from the bouquet A had seen the previous day. When they got within a few meters, they realized why the papers hadn't been blown away by the wind. They were nailed to the sidewalk. And not only that, one of the boys found that there was something drawn on the paper. And each time the wind made the paper flutter, something on the ground facing surface became visible. So A decided to turn over one of the papers. On it was a bright red handprint. Right in the center of the white paper was a small handprint about the size of a newborn's, starkly red with a hole in the middle where the nail had been driven through. So he thought, what is this? His friend was also intrigued. He quickly peeled off another piece of paper. This one had the shapes of a hand and a foot. And the drawing was bizarre. Like the first, there was a small bright red handprint. The drawing's simple red lines resembled ancient wall paintings. And at that moment, suddenly, a piercing scream of a woman came from right below where they were standing, under the railing gaps. A pale, unnaturally long and thin female head was stuck in the railings, and its mouth was wide open, as if it were screaming. 
The rest of her face was hidden by wet hair. Her teeth were unusually white, and her torso dangled outside the railing. And the two boys, they started screaming. The sudden appearance of the woman's head between them made them ditch their bicycles and run in opposite directions as fast as they could. And when A reached the end of the bridge, there was no sign of being followed or any sound. He stopped and called his friend on his phone. Did you get away? Are you okay? He asked his friend and his heart was still racing from the terrifying encounter. He was gasping for breath and his friend answered, I'm okay, but what was that thing? Like, what, what do we do now? And my bike, I left it back there. His friend sounded terrified and worried. He had to cross the bridge again to get home, which was in the opposite direction from where he had fled. A checked the time on his phone and it was around 8 p.m. The darkness made it impossible to see the other side of the bridge or understand his friend's predicament. No cars were passing by at this hour, so he suggested his friend call his parents, make up a story about his bike breaking down, and ask them or another friend to pick him up in a car. But his friend was panicking and he insisted, no, you come here. A tried to calm him down, then hung up to call his mother. But his phone showed out of service area. What? Like, how did he call his friend then? And suddenly his phone rang. It was his friend calling, but something was off. He answered the phone, expecting to hear his friend, but the voice on the other end wasn't his. It was someone screaming. Even when he pulled the phone away from his ear, the sound continued. In that moment, A realized his friend might be in real danger. He felt this urgency to reach him before it was too late. The situation was spiraling into something far beyond their understanding. Even though he thought it might be too late, A ended the call with the scream still ringing in his ears and sprinted towards his friend on the other side of the bridge. He ran in the middle of the road, deliberately avoiding the sidewalk. He didn't want to get anywhere near the railings. And as he reached the midpoint of the bridge, a dark shadow suddenly bolted towards him from the darkness ahead. He was terrified. In a moment of sheer panic, he forgot all about his mission to save his friend and turned, running back to the way he came. The shadow kept following him. Then from behind, he heard his friend's voice asking why he was running away. It turned out that the shadow was actually his friend who mustered the courage to run towards him despite being scared, especially since it was way past his curfew. Confused, he confronted his friend about the strange screams he heard over the phone. But his friend said his phone had been in the basket of his bike, which he left halfway across the bridge. So there was no way he could have made that call. As they walked home, A was left to wonder who he had been talking to on the phone. They were both drained, too exhausted to engage in much conversation. Each was lost in their thoughts, wondering what what was the bizarre figure they had seen on the bridge and what might have happened to them that night? The experience was unsettling, leaving them with more questions than answers. A few days after this strange experience, A decided to seek some answers. He approached a local elder known for his knowledge of the area's history and asked about the bridge's past and any rumors associated with it. The elder made a strange gesture with his fingers, folding his thumb and leaving the rest unfolded. He explained that this symbolized a beast or was an insult referring to certain low-class individuals. These people often marginalized and struggling to find proper employment used to collect gravel from the riverbed for construction, a job that was both arduous and dangerous. Many of them drowned each year due to the strong current before a dam was built to stabilize the water. 
the bridge they knew was later constructed over this river. When the elder mentioned a riddle written on a piece of paper, and a paper that A and his friend had unknowingly brought back from the bridge, he realized the potential danger. So they burned the paper and scattered purifying salt at the entrance and inside their homes. Fortunately, no strange occurrences have happened since. But one thing became clear to A and his friend, they would never again cross that bridge on foot. The memory of the terrifying figure they encountered that night lingered, a mystery that remained unsolved to this day. So what exactly was that thing they saw on the bridge? That question continues to haunt them. That is the end of our story today. Hope you liked it. If you have stories or urban legends that you want to share, let me know. See you guys in our next episode and good night.